here at the Beer Farmers in beautiful Pemberton, BC, and welcome to part one of a three-part series on how to prepare for the winter during the summer months. The period between June and September is what I like to call general training. So what do I mean by general training? Well, all that means to me is playing outside. I like to play outside as much as possible. I like to try and move in a way that I didn't move as much during the winter season. So my activity of choice during this general training period is trail running. And the reason why I like trail running is because I'm in an uncontrolled environment. Now the gym is very much a controlled environment. Now when I'm trail running, I have to respond to the information that's coming my way very, very quickly. Skiing, we do exactly the same thing. We are constantly responding to the information that the slope is giving us on any given run. So that's what I like to do during the general training part of my summer, is ensure that I'm training in an uncontrolled environment. So if you can try to keep this in mind when you're doing your general training portion of the summer, it's gonna benefit you a lot better for when you hit those winter months and you get onto those skis. If you find during the winter when you're skiing that you have knee or hip niggles, okay, and you feel that they are letting you down in some way when you're skiing, Stay to the end of this episode where I have a little bonus exercise for you which can really help those parts of your body when skiing next winter. Exercise number one, the lunge kick. So the lunge kick, what I'm really trying to do here is focus on my stability and muscle activation. Now there are a couple of things that you need to consider when you're doing a lunge kick. And one of those is respecting the 90 degree angles. So this is what I mean by that. I wanna make sure that I respect the 90 degrees. So I have 90 degrees in my front leg, 90 degrees in my back leg. You can have your hands out here in 90 degrees if you wish, or dead straight, because you'll need these later to help with the balance. Okay, all you're going to do is focus on this. Make sure you, uh, make sure that you activate your posterior chain as you move up and kick and then back down, and up and kick, and then back down, up, kick. Notice that I don't lose those 90 degrees in my body. I'm trying to stay disciplined and keep the movements very slow and very, very stable. So everything that I'm doing is on purpose and controlled. Once you've done about 10 to 15 reps, and you feel your leg fatigue, swap over to the other leg. So as I'm doing this exercise, I'm really focusing on my glute muscle, focusing on my quad muscle, and I'm focusing on my core. I wanna keep all of these engaged and firing at the right time. So generally, I try to keep this engaged at all times. When I come down, I'm looking for that quad, that, that kind of glue muscle to fire, and then the quad to help stabilize me at the top, okay? So keeping your core nice and strong throughout, and then engaging your glute to help push you up, and your quad to help keep you stable, all right? Making sure that the knees, ankles and hips are all aligned from the bottom half of the exercise right through to completion. A couple of add-ons to this, if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, okay, is to add a TheraBand. So you can attach a TheraBand to the inside of a door jam or around a table or around a chair leg. And make sure that you're pulling out with the knee just enough to keep that TheraBand taut and the glute engaged. Okay, another thing you wanna make sure is when you're doing this, that you don't allow the knee to fall inside. You don't want to lose that rotational stability that your glute is providing.
Exercise number two is the drinking bird. So how do we do the drinking bird? Okay, so it's primarily stabilizing and utilizing one leg at a time, all right? So I'm gonna use my left leg first. What I want to do is slightly lift up my right leg so it's not touching the ground. Have a slight bend in the hip and the knee to get the glute engaged. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna hinge from my, my hip, trying to keep my line of my leg and my back straight, as full as straight as you can, okay? Until my hands touch the floor and then back up, all right? Now, if you have a little bit of a wobble, that's okay, okay? But try to get it so that your foot isn't wobbling at all, all right? And remember, the remove stays controlled and slow, okay? Again, this is focusing our glutes, okay? It is keeping our plantar flexors working, all right? And it is utilizing the leg to ensure that it has good structure and stability around that knee. A good tip to help you with the drinking bird is that if you find that the leg that's off the ground, the hip kind of opens up as you hinge. As you hinge, try to envision that you're rotating your leg inwards, okay, to keep your hips dead align because if I don't and I do this you're not accessing and working the targeted area that this exercise is designed for. Again do about 10 to 15 reps until you feel that that leg is fatiguing and then swap over to the other leg. So again, I'm twisting and I'm rotating my femur slightly inwards as I bring it back to make sure I have the right structure and I'm targeting the right muscle and I'm not allowing that hip to open up as I hinge forwards. number three is an active plank. So once again, when we're skiing, we're adjusting ourselves to the environment all the time. We're not static. So when I do my planks, I like to keep them active and keep me moving, which means that I do double the work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from our hands in a normal plank position, just like you're about to start a push up. You're gonna bring your knees up to your elbows one at a time. So knee, knee, then you're gonna drop down to your elbows and then you're gonna roll your hips as if you're rolling your hips over a ball from one side to the other and back up to the starting position. Knee, knee, down, down, roll, roll. Up, starting position. Knee, knee, down, down, roll, roll. Now this is designed to do as many as you can in 30 seconds. Once you find that you can do, you know, 10, 20, and 30 seconds, you're not getting fatigued, up the time to 45, and then to a minute. And then by the end of the summer, you should be able to do these for two minutes straight, or at least I hope so. By doing this, I'm engaging all of my core, I'm engaging my obliques, my lower back, my scapula, and I'm being active. So I'm actually having to utilize all of my body movements and my body muscles to complete the task at hand.
simple exercises that I utilize pretty much every day from the periods between June and September. Okay, these really attack my weaknesses in skiing. So I hope that you guys give these a go and see if they work for you. If not, try to focus on what your weakness is on your skis and try to find an exercise that really targets those during the summer seasons. So if you enjoyed this video guys, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. And stay tuned for part two, where we go over the specific training from the September months, moving closer to winter. If you're having issues with either your hip or your knee when you're skiing, especially the hip where you feel like you don't have that rotational control, there is an area of the body that kind of gets a little bit overlooked and it plays a big part in knee stabilization and hip rotation. And they are the plantar flexors. So where are the plantar flexors? Well, funnily enough, there are all these muscles here on the back of your calf. There's a really simple way that you can work these out during these summer months to really benefit you when you're skiing next winter. So let me show you what that is. Firstly, you want to get into a squat-like position. And I don't mind if you stand with your toe, just on your toes and your heels are up, or if you can get onto a flat foot, that's even better. Now, if you can get into this range of motion, this is really good for your hips and your knees, but make sure that your knees don't fall in. They want to stay up and aligned. Now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to push down on the balls of our feet and we're going to lift the heels off of the ground, okay? Now this really, really works the flexors in the toes and you've got to try to do it nice and controlled and it really engages all those plantar flexor muscles in the back of the calf, all right? Don't worry if you have a little bit of a shudder, that's absolutely fine, okay? And again, Another version of this is just doing the same movement standing up, okay? Now with both movements and both positions, do it until that part of the body gets fatigued and then stop, okay? Mark how many you can do and keep tabs on that as the summer months progress. So here's the other version. Stand in nice and tall, strong core, relax and just slowly lift and back down. And pay attention to which toes your weight is falling on. You don't want to end up rolling the foot out. You don't want to end up collapsing the knees in. You want to keep all balanced and utilize all five toes on both feet. And if you really want to work it, 